All right, we're on the S&P. So here we got the S&P 500. Now, like I said, this works on all markets. It works on all futures, all stocks, all indices, and all Forex. It doesn't matter what market it is. This is very, very universal, and it's a plug and play. We will have these templates made up for you, and we'll have these templates where you just download the file, and you'll be able to see the, this, uh, my market profile uh, fire up automatically, my sweet spot arrows to fire up automatically for you, and then we got the market delta below the, uh, the arrows. So this, temp, this template Gerald's going to make for you already. So, um, however, you can plug and play however you want to set your charts up. This is just how I like to do it. I like to see the arrow fire, and then I like to see confirmation of market delta below uh, to give me confirmation of a buy or sell imbalance to get into the market at a key market profile level. That's how I like to do it. Now, a lot of traders, that, uh, the, especially the S&P, is one market that's just extremely accurate. When the arrow fires, a lot of traders will probably just get in with the arrow, stop loss, two ticks below the swing low, and try to trade it that way, which is fine. I'm just going to show you how I like to do it. Uh, but you can you can run with this system as fast as you want. I mean, you can trade any market with this system because it's plug and play. It's very universal. The idea behind the system is it's trying to find order imbalances at key market structure. And that is why the system is so accurate. I developed the system over years and years of, uh, of trading, knowing the sweet spots in the market are developed by market profile. This left chart. The solid red, blue, and green lines, that's not my opinion. That's not your opinion. That's actually market structure. It's actually volume. That's volume profile. That's volume coming into the market from all the algorithms out there, all the hedge funds, all the prop firms, the amateur, the professional traders. And what it allows me to do is allows me to find out where support and resistance. For example, the S&P stopped to the tick right at my developing profile. I have three profiles on there, which I'll go over this morning for you and train, um, you know, why I train you. So, and then we had a positive market delta of 134 down here in the bottom right. So, it just, this is the relationship that I, that why I put this together. The, what I found over the past 23 years is I found that everything is dictated by order flow, period. And if you can get on the side of order flow, we don't have to fight the tape. We want to be with the tape. We don't want to be with the amateur traders, guys and gals that are just the, uh, average traders out there. We want to be with the algorithms, the high-frequency traders. We, uh, the markets now are almost all electronically traded. If you look back in the day, the S&P, the SP, had all the volume. You know, we have a floor trader in the room that is a member. You know, I'll tell you, that's where all the volume was. Now the volume is electronically in the ES. So. It's no, the floor traders no longer have the pool. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. So when I developed the system, I said, hey, if they don't have the pool no more, how can I get a market roadmap to tell me where to buy and sell? But how can I make it simple? Because when I first opened up the room, you know, you had to match this indicator with this indicator with this indicator, this Fibonacci retracement, all this stuff. But what I've done is I've included all that with an arrow-based system, but I'm showing you why these arrows should fire at these levels and why they will be a uh, high probability trade. So that's the gist of the system. So let's go over, let's break this down a little bit on, on why, this is, uh, why, why this works on all markets. First of all, my, my far left chart is a market profile chart. That chart tells me uh, where, where support and resistance is. Okay? And the reason, the reason that uh, I use market profile is, like I said, it's, it's the roadmap of the market. You know, I use this analogy all the time. You don't leave from Florida and drive to California and wing it and just say, hey, let's just, let's just go and let's go west, right? You just don't do that. You, you get, you get your, 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 your map, map quest on and, or Google Maps, whatever you use, and you, you plug it in, and that's the direction you go. Same with trading is that you need a roadmap. You need to know where to buy and sell. For example, if you look up here on my market delta, it called the high with a 994 a negative 994 here, um, right here at the high of high value area. Do you think it's just by luck that it stopped right at the high value, and it's by luck that it stopped right to the tick and my low value developing profile? 
with the positive market delta. That's not just luck. That is actually order flow of the market. That's taking all the volume that's in the market and it's computing what I well, I don't use 30 minute market profiles. I use longer term market profiles. It's actually been working for 32 years, well actually 33 years now. So it's been working since 1985 the same way. Traders just get overwhelmed by market profile. They think it's too hard to understand. Well, I make it quite simple for you. If I'm in an uptrend, I'm a net buyer market profile. If I'm in a downtrend, I'm a net seller market profile. And I'll train you guys this morning on how to do that. Um, but I don't want to make this video too long. So that's market profile. I got three profiles on here, very simple. I got the, the solid uh, uh, green, blue, and red. That's the most important. Because if you look at the big inflection points on the S&P, it's been here and it's been here on my outer edges on value. And so right now this morning and yesterday was the same way. It caused some huge inflection points off value yesterday. So you can tell that negative market delta came down here. If you look, here's my negative market delta that came down off of right there. And then I got positive market delta at the swing low on my market delta. So that's to make it just simple for you to understand. You want to see an order imbalance at high value and you want to see an order imbalance at low value. So that's market profile. The volume profile, like I said, the solid green, blue, and red, that's your most important. <clears throat> because if we didn't have those, you know, I wouldn't consider market profile very valuable. The volume dictates the market, that's why I love them. My thin red line and my thin green line, that's developing as the market ticks. So that's called developing profile. And it stops at the tick here on my S&P uh, here at this low on positive market delta. So that's my second profile that we use. I don't have a control point of blue in the developing. It's, it's inaccurate. I don't like it. So I only have the blue. The, the only control point you're going to see on Ninja 8 is my volume profile. It's the most important. I don't have price profile in there, and I do not have developing pro. I mean, I do not have um, developing profile control. Because well, how I program it is, if price and volume should be about the same area, and it should move in the same area. So this blue line is the only blue line you're going to see. That's the most volume that's traded in that instrument that you are trading. Okay, so that's the most volume that's traded in that instrument. The high value is derived from the blue line. The low value is derived from the green line. And so this tells us right here that I got good support at three times stack. My price profile are the green dots, low value area. My side of the line is volume profile. And my developing profile is a green level. But if you trade all markets, you want to see those three levels stack up. And I'm going to train you like that this morning. When they come together, when they come together and they're stacking within a couple ticks of each other, some days you'll see it stack right on top of each other, right to the right, right over top of each other to the tick. So I'll show you how to trade off that. But that's on my three profiles. You want to see them stack over top. I do have a trend filter built in. My trend filter is right here. My trend filter, moving averages are worthless to me. You can't trade moving average. I, I did a traders expo in Las Vegas, spoke in front of a lot of traders this last November, and almost everyone trades off moving averages or stochastics. No one knows about market profile who raise their hands, and no one knows about market build, et cetera, and Elliott Wave, et cetera. It's pretty crazy. But everybody knows about moving averages. They are worthless. They're great for turn direction. They're bad if for crossovers because they're lagging, et cetera. I use it for trend direction. So if my magenta MA is angled up, which is angled up, I'm going to look for buy arrows over here on my sweet spot indicator. And I'm also going to look for what? I'm going to look for buying market profile and a retracement. So when market profile came down to my low value area, I got three ways to buy and uptrends. And I'll go over that here this morning. So that told me right here, I'm not so concerned about the white MA. I like the spread between it. I like to look at the angle. If I'm angled up, I'm a net buyer of market profile on a retracement. So when it comes into these profile levels, I want to see a green arrow over here, or you don't even have to have a green arrow, just a positive market delta, which I'll show you how to get in on that trade to the upside. So that's what I like to do. And if you take a counter trend trade like this up here on the S&P, it's selling at uh, 03. If you sold the 03, that's still a valid trade because you had a stack level of market profile, two times stack, and you had a negative market delta of negative 994, which is a huge order imbalance, and that was a sell right there. So you had a sell here on the S&P this morning, according to my system, 
and you had a buy here this morning also. So that's market profile. Let's go to the right. This is pretty sweet, what I came up with. And Dave, what is the scale for each chart and why? Yeah, Dave, I'll go over all that stuff when we send it out. And Jay, uh, please say what value is for each chart in five minutes. Yes, five Simrinko. This is a five, uh, uh, S&P is a four Simrinko. Uh, the Russell, I mean the uh, mini, mini is a five Simrinko. I believe it's a five. Let me check my mini. I'm going to double check. Make sure it's a five. Yeah, I'm a five Simrinko on the Russell mini, uh, Steve, and I'm a four Simrinko on the ES. Almost all my charts, guys and gals I trade, is four and five Simrinko. I like a little longer term Renko. I will go longer term on the DAX. I, I, I'm going to go over all that stuff if you lease the system. I'm going to tell you what I like to see. But this is plug and play. These arrows do not repaint. In fact, you can go back a whole year on these arrows if you want, if you lease the system. And you're going to see every single buy, <coughs> and, uh, loser, and winner on the system with every time frame. <coughs> so you're going to know right away the accuracy. These do not repaint. The one thing that kills me, the one thing that killed me early on in my trading is you'd have a winner, you'd see a winner on a certain software, all of a sudden it would break the low and it would disappear. Even if these break the low, they do not disappear. They do not repaint. Okay, so these arrows fire up. Why do these arrows fire? These arrows fire based upon a sweet spot in the market. Now, what I'm not showing you in the room is my J signal, which has a new one, it has an Elliott wave on it, and it has a sweet spot indicator on it uh, also built in. If you lease a system, you get J-Signal, and also we do have the symmetry dots available also for Ninja 8 to scale. I just don't show it in here because I got the Fibonacci dots built into these arrows. Okay, you don't need J-Signal per se. If you want to see why these arrows are firing and, what, and its own market profile and the Fibonacci dots, I really took a lot of that out of the, out of the equation now for traders who want an arrow-based system because it's built in. But when you lease a system, you do get the J-Signal. Uh, which everybody's familiar with, with the Fibonacci dots. It does have one, two, three Elliott wave patterns on it, and it also has a sweet spot indicator built in for retracements. Okay, that is built into the market. So I just don't show in the room because I don't think it's necessary because it built it into the into the arrows. So let's take a look at the arrows real quick and, and, and why these are so important. Let's take a look at this week's trading a little bit. Now, if I skinny this down, look at the accuracy on the S&P 500. What it's trying to do is, I have a trend filter built in this thing also. I love the, uh, uh, the S&P, NASDAQ futures work really well, Dow minis work really well. You know, a lot of these markets work really well on the system. But if you look, what it's trying to do is trying to catch these swings. I'm trying to catch swings, trying to catch that swing low in an uptrend. So I do have a trend filter built in, but as you can tell, my gold and crude, more volatile markets, you're going to get a lot more signals. Now this is a four sim Renko. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, for the S&P, that's a pretty long-term Renko bar. But as you can tell, um, like yesterday we had a nice trade, today we had a nice trade early in the morning. Yesterday it caught the low, caught the low, caught the low, caught the low. If this arrow fires, guys and gals, the premise of it is to say, hey, I'm on a retracement. I'm in an uptrend. Let's look at going long here, 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 here. The hardest part about this system you're going to find is scaling. And that's what I came up with the symmetry dots. The symmetry dots work on your own system. I don't show them in the room. It's a one-time fee of $297. But those are help you scale and try to let the runners run. But you can see the accuracy. And I can go all the way back, all the way back. And you can see if I go all the way back about a month or so, it's still the same premise what it's trying to do. It's trying to catch the swing low. So it's all the way back to, what, January 1. Here we have a short. We didn't have a short before. Here's, here's short set, set up in the morning, 9 to what, 30. But these are drastic moves. These are not small moves. I mean, this guy ran from 1290 all the way down into the 80s. So that's a nice 10-point move. This move right here is around 83 all the way to 95. That's over 11, 12-point move. These moves are pretty drastic on a 4 sim Renko. Now, like I said, when you get this system in your hands, is that you can pretty much go any time frame you want. Now, what, what I like to do is... I like to uh, use a longer term, and when these arrows fire off, there's going to be a bullet sound. It sounds like a little bullet. So what you want to do is you want to turn your speakers up. Turn your speakers up, blast them off. Um, there's five settings on my, I, I made an audible alert on the arrows. There's five settings. When it fires off, I like the bullet. It's the number three setting on the wave alert. 
it sounds like a bullet coming right out of a gun. And it is loud and it's very, very distinct. If you want an annoying one that really annoys the heck out of you, do wave number one. And I guarantee you, you will not miss an arrow that fires off because it is loud and obnoxious. But number three, I like three. We're going to make it three standard if you lease the program. So in other words, this arrow, when it fires off, when this arrow fires off right here, it, at the close of this bar is when you're going to hear it fire off. You're going to hear a gunshot. It's like a gunshot. Like I said, if you want to change it to number one, I'm leaving these settings open for you. You can change it to number one, and it will fire a different sound. If a beep, I believe, is number two or two or four. So, but I like the gunshot sound. It's pretty. It's like a torpedo, and that fires off. So when those fire off. If you have your speakers on, you're trading multiple markets. I like to look at a lot of different futures. I like to look at a lot of different uh, indices. And I like to look at uh, some different stocks and also forex. So I'm looking at multiple markets. So if I see, uh, if I hear it go off, I'm actually looking at my charts, seeing if we're right on top of market profile, you know, to qualify it, to extra qualify it, see if we're getting positive market build and so on. But that's how we do it. Now, if you want more trade, if you want more trade, go down to a smaller time frame. Now, I don't suggest going too small because you're going to get a lot of trade because the arrows come up based upon the swings in the market. It's based upon the swing sweet spot of the market. Everybody knows I love a 62% retracement in the market. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows 62 to 76% is my sweet spot in the market. We all know I love that sweet spot. If you go to a smaller time frame, you're going to get more signal. So if I look at here, it only produced one signal on this trading day, but now if I go to a smaller time frame, I'm producing right here in the morning after 8.30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 signal. So if you want more signals, you can go to a lower, lower, lower time frame. But you're going to know right away, and, and you can go all the way back as long as you want, as long as you want. Look at this. As long as you want. Look at how accurate the system is. long as you want to fire off. If you go to a smaller time frame, you're going to get more shorts and long. That's just how it is. So, but I, I'm going to show you which time frames I like. I like the four on the S&P. The four is very, very accurate to me. Um, that's going all the way back to January 2017, and uh, it's very, very accurate. You can see once you get the system, you'll be able to see all the arrows. Um, you can pull them all up, all that you want together. Okay, so that's how that works. But they, they they're trying to find the sweet spot uh, in the market on a retracement. Okay? Do you need the arrow to buy? No, nope, because that was a sell right here on market profile, and that was a buy. Why? Look at my positive market delta. Look at my name market delta. And let's get down here to the market delta. Then. So the arrows fire on my sweet spot in the market based upon my Fibonacci analysis that is built in, and also there's more supply and more demand if that arrow is going to fire. Okay? Very simple. Not hard to understand. Now, let's look at market delta. Market delta down here. Market delta, do you have to have an arrow to get into these markets? Absolutely not. These arrows are my built-in Fibonacci's are already built into the arrows, and there's also Elliott Wave built in there, and there's also supply and demand built in there. And there's also uh, one more ingredient built in there, but these arrows are very important because it's got a lot of ingredients. Those by themselves are very powerful without market profile, market delta. But I take it a step further. I said, hey, if I get an arrow, and it's happening on the, uh, on the Russell 2000 right now, the mini, uh, on the buy sell buy setup, and I'll go over that in a second also. But if you get market profile, and it's on market profile and uptrend, and you get an arrow and market delta, I mean, what more do you want? Okay, because those are all the true order flow of the market. The arrows Fibonacci analysis, the the market delta, the bottom here is the actual order flow of the market, the supply and demand, and then I got my roadmap as market profile. I mean, that is complete analysis of the market, okay? So you don't have to, an arrow, have, to arrow, have to have an arrow to get in. If you're on market profile on an uptrend, which I'll go over in a second how to do it, you can use market delta. So let's go over market delta on the bottom here. Market delta, simply, red is bearish, green is bullish. If I'm coming down to market profile, if I'm coming up here to market profile two times stack for a short, two times stack for a short, it's happening a lot on the S&P, it'll stop right at HVA. If I'm coming down here to two, uh, three times stack on the buy, then what I want to see is I want to see market delta change. So if you notice right here, market delta switched over right here, negative 994. That's a huge selling balance. So 
So what you do is you would open your position up on the next bar after this bar closes. The stop loss would be two ticks above the swing high. All right, and then your goal is to get down to your other market profile. Same way on the buy. It came down into triple support. Developing profile, thin green. Volume profile, price, stopped on the tick. Positive 134, there you go. All right, so that's how you do it. Let me shut this video off in a second. Go over to the RTY. Let me show you why that was a signal on the RTY. Gerald, move over to the RTY, the Russell 2000. Move over to the RTY. I'm going to shut this off real quick, man. Let's go to the Russell 2000. Now, I like the Russell 2000 Mini because you produce a really a lot of trades, a nice trade. Now, same thing on the Russell 2000. I was at two times stacked area. Now, it's just not by dumb luck that that's the high with negative market delta. You, you know, look at the negative market delta here, and here we go again. Look at my negative market delta. Ah, where are we at? Hold on one second. Negative market delta, negative 50. That's a huge order balance for the RTY. Look at the two times stacked area, two times stacked market profile. There's your two times stacked profile. Remember, you can't take a counter trend trade unless you get negative market delta and stacked areas. But look at me blind as a bat not to see those market profile areas are stacked. Now, this is what I want to see if it comes with a couple of tips. This is why I love market profile. I just I absolutely love it. It is a roadmap. It, it, it takes you a half of a nano of a second to realize that's a buy setup because you're on triple support. Look at my volume profile. Look at my low value area. It's stacked right over top of my developing, stacked right over top of my price. That's three times stacked area. Now, what else is happening with the market? What else is happening here? Look at my arrow firing. Just it fired green, but hold on. When it fired green, it was still red market profile. Check this out. Now, this is how you, you marry this thing up. Look how it was still red market profile, and then a positive market profile came in, and guess what the market does? There she goes. It starts moving up. Just like with the low. Now, look at the low down here. Look at the low down here this morning. Right here. Look how my arrow fire. Now watch. Watch how this marries up together. Look how my market profile fired. Right at my low value area right here. Check this out. Right at my three times area stack. This is how you're going to do all markets. Not hard. It won't take you that long to pick this up. Look how my arrow fires. Look at my positive market delta. That Russell 2000 trade was a beautiful trade. Right? Oops, not that one. Sorry. There you go. It was a beautiful trade right there. Now the one earlier, uh, this happens a lot for the Russell. It, after 6 p.m. Uh, all the way to what 9:30, 10, you're going to get some 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 steep trades like this. But you don't have to trade in low volume markets. But you see this a lot on the Aussie. See this a lot on the Euro. You'll see 6 p.m. to 9, 10. You'll see a lot of big moves like this with an arrow. But but you can see you can see that right here it matched up too, didn't it? So if I look at all my three inflection points, what did I do? I matched the market profile with the arrow with market delta. All right, isn't that pretty cool? That's how it matches up.